hello, good evening, welcome. If you, hi, I'm Kate. If you're new here, welcome. If you're coming back, welcome back. Um, just a few housekeeping things. The first one is I did like a minute by minute timeline for Ethan. It's uploading right now. So by the time you see this, it'll be up or it'll be up right after this. The next thing is if you've never channeled or been around someone who's channeled, what you're doing is you are going between dimensions. So in the third dimension, we still have to use our voices because we can't intuitively understand like animals. When you see a herd of animals in the field, they don't yell at each other to figure out what's going on. They can intuitively know what's going on. So when I get comments, like I, I saw a comment that said I looked nervous. I probably was because the trans thing is really, it did bother me. And if you were in the trans community, that's like saying you have a white brother-in-law. Like, okay. You're not in the trans community if you were around it. I, I, I'm asking specific. One more thing. I saw someone in the comments. I thought this was pretty cute, but she said that not all sororities and fraternities buy their friends, which completely defeated the purpose of why athletes who were D1 athletes, so we're going places, um, made fun of the Greek system. We didn't have to pay a semester fee to hang out at the house. We had our own house. So the difference is you pay to be in the Greek system. And if you're an athlete, they pay you to be there. Like we don't pay to hang out with our friends. We get paid to be there. So I just wanted to make that really clear. I didn't mean to be, I was snarky and I was snobby about it then. And apparently I'm still a little snobby about it. And it's sorry. That's how I feel about that. All of a sudden the Greek system's free. Then I'll change my mind, but it's not. So UNH was one of the biggest party schools and the best business school in the nation. That's not Ivy. So and D1. So it was a good school. We had fun and we learned a lot. And I still make fun of the Greek system and I don't make fun of it. I think I, that if you don't pay to be a part of the sorority or the fraternity, then you're not paying for friends. If you do pay, which I know you do per semester, the simple conclusion is you're paying for your friends. Okay, rant over. Thanks for coming. Back to us. Well, first of all, we're using a new deck. This is the Game of Thrones because I feel like this is a Game of Thrones. And oh, and everyone that's like reading and doing it too, this is awesome. I just, I'm really proud and it's awesome. And I saw the comment about video cards and I used to do that and I didn't, no one watched it anyway. So I was like, yeah. the next thing that we're gonna do tonight. So I got that rant out of my way. Thank you for coming. Sorry about the rant. If you don't know YouTube etiquette, I, then you probably don't because apparently it's, uh, not a thing, but it should be because it's like basic etiquette. Like you don't show up to someone's house and complain about the food that the host serves. And if you're confused, I don't know what to tell you and I'm sorry, but if you don't start at number one, that's the only thing I can tell you is like that you need to start at number one. You can watch the whole process unfold, especially when I'm channeling, like when I'm reading, getting messages from the other side. So I'm in like three dimensions and that's okay. Some of us are magicians and some of us are at the world. One of the OGs, I saw you're an accountant. In that accounting video, I'm sorry, in the spreadsheet video that I just made of Ethan, it's timeline and remember it's Ethan and Zana. I showed you guys where I got it. Oh, and I made us a, a shared folder in YouTube or in Google so you guys can grab all the stuff. Like I've been organizing it. So there's pictures, there's the timeline and then the financials. And maybe if we did like a discord list, I don't really know how to do it. But what I do know is you have a first amendment right to your opinion and I, that's nice. But there's a lot of room for, we just don't want to get on a timeline and, or on a, well, that too, but on, uh, I just want to stay under the radar. We are going to figure out who our emperor is. The first thing I want to know is if it's Hunter Johnson. And I saw he was dating another little blonde girl. I wrote her name down, but that really matters that much in the sense that he might not have been quite as faithful as he appeared to be. I don't know what he was like as a real person or according to the cards. Oh, and the, hi. I'm Kate. This is all allegedly for entertainment purposes only. Do your own research. Yeah. So according to the cards, he was thinking with something and I don't think it was anything. The point is, is if he had a girlfriend. Uh, okay. <laughs> all right. He wasn't showing any girlfriends last night. We're going to ask if he is the emperor. If you're using your pendulum and your pendulum says something else, this is where we are. So it's okay. I, I mean, the accuracy of the cards is like 100% in my experience. The cards are never wrong. It's always the reader. Right? That's so, what I was talking. I don't know what to say. Like, okay, <laughs> if you get something else, fine. We are going to check in right now. <laughs> These cards are already ready. Okay. If Hunter Johnson is the emperor, 
Let's do upright. Yes, yeah, reverses now. I might read it, or we might just do two out of three. No, 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 no. Yes. When you get new cards, this is the way I was taught. Again, there are no tarot police. And if someone has a certificate, that's cute. I do too. Like, okay. And I do have a ton of certificates. I've gotten certified in every. That's another reason I teach. But I was taught that when you get cards, you put them up high, higher, the highest spot in the room and let them sleep with you overnight. So like it's a windowsill that's higher, the highest spot in the rooms. But I also feel like I don't really want to use a new deck. I want to go back to the Rider Waits because I feel like I really like these cards. I just don't want to jump in on them for... To, if we're figuring out who the Emperor is, I feel like we need to use Rider Waite because they got us this far. I do like the way these feel, though. I ordered Angel cards, and then we were getting all the fours. Fours, oh, I also was thinking, so fours are also um, Idaho four. Duh. So it's like peace, protection, guidance from your angels. Thank you so much for putting that in the comments. And there were four of them. So I am, so these, they're adorable. So we have this word, they're called the angel message number. So it has like four, four, four. And I think we had three, four. Oh, someone's dream was four, four, four. So that's trust your journey. Trust the way your life unfolds and trust that you are where you need to be at the present moment. I am protected. We're going to pull these on HGA now. We might have just found our new one. Well, we'll see. So now, sorry, I'm going to, I'll fast forward this part. We are going to shuffle and we are going to uh, check in on our emperor. All right, we're going to do upright yes. A card just jumped, but I'm not going to read it because we're doing upright yes and reversals no. Yes, yes, no, yes, no. So we just got yes, yes. Yeah, we just got a yes. But you know what's funnier? Guess what cards? So we asked was H.J. the Emperor. For tonight's dinner party, guess who's coming? We have the Death Guard. We have D-Bag and her boyfriend. We have our project manager. We have Rat Row. We have the ultimate betrayal. And we have Sleepless Nights. <laughs> so... If you're new here, I will explain what I'm looking at. The death card, in this case, means literal death. In regular readings, it just means change. Nothing is by the books or by anything that you can find or read. That being said, if it couldn't be any clearer, we just started off with the death card. We then, in episode two-ish reading that we did, this represented, I don't know what to say. I know I'm sorry about the cryptic. That's where we are. And th this is what it is. So the point is, this is the Queen of Swords who is the D-bag and her little boyfriend. He hasn't shown up for a while until last night, but here he is. This was our project manager. And if you haven't seen the creation of our hierarchy wheel, when I figured out that we had a snake in the grass, we have that hermit. The hermit, until three days ago, was always showing up like this, always. And what the hermit is, He's the sage. He's smarter than the Queen of Swords. The Queen of Swords is up here with the Hierophant and the Emperor. She's right in the middle. She works both sides of this fence. Until three days ago, when the ultimate betrayal happened with our buddy, Ethan, he always showed up like this. When Ethan showed us that he was betrayed by the people he absolutely loved and trusted the most, this started showing up in reverse. The reason that that's important is because this is a mental health card. To, for me, again, if you learn something different, good. As long as you learn that like cups are water. Like, if you learn something else other than like the basics, then you have to go back. And I'd ask for my money back too, if you paid for it, because that's what it is. But the point is it can represent a mental health card. It's solitude to detrimental amounts. Upright, he's like lighting the night up. He has his staff. That's also very symbolic in the Christian world. Um, he's a sage. He's smart. When he's in reverse, this is like mental health. Well, good thing that we know who our mentally ill person is. And we're all, we're working in symbols here. Like everything is symbolic. We're not working in this 3D jungle of madness we're working in like we're in a higher level we're not in like fighting on youtube put it that way and we're not fighting on youtube here we're, we're spreading love and light that's all we do here our only job is to find the truth so these 
before kids can move on. Okay, there's no time on the other side. That's something that actually bothered me the other night. We were celebrating their one year. That's not how it works. And what it does is it keeps them here. Like, I'm actually very not into that at all. Because what they need to do is they've cried. The thing is, I know that Ashley, I love you very much. And I know that there a lot of readers are getting that they've crossed over. Everything's okay. Maybe they have. don't want to go down that road at all. But what I do want to say is there's a, the reason that they are coming through eyes to see and ears to hear. That's Jesus. I think it was in Matthew. You can, you don't have to check me on the book, but I love Jesus. He's my buddy. There's a re, the reason that they're here. There could be such deep grief. Okay. Princess Di had this too. When Princess Diana died, the grief worldwide was so heavy. She was like stuck here. That's what happens. This is part of the spiritual thing. If you don't want to hear it, actually just fast forward until I wait. And you can help them too, by the way. This is not like an us against them or anything. All of us have the same skills. Some of us study. Some of us don't. Some of us are natural. It's when a spirit is stuck. There's no time on their side. So when we're celebrating or paying tribute, in any way, celebrating the day that they are gone, in any way, like that is not the way, what it doesn't do is help them release. They very much heavy grief. There's like, I'm not a shrink and I'm not trying to diagnose those guys. I'm not only, I'll just talk about it. What I can say though is like, Ethan, also when you're on the other side, you don't have these emotion, human emotions of like defensive. When you're living in your root chakra, that's the red chakra. You're living in fear. That's fight or flight. That's it. Just even if you move, you can start opening up your chakras. And once you start living out of a place like not of defensiveness, like our survival, moving into a different dimension. Some of you might have heard of like the 5D Earth. Dolores Cannon has a bunch of stuff on it. As you mature as a soul and you're still learning your lessons or there's a whole nother thing. That would be another video. And I would love to talk about it. But the main thing is, is when someone that you love dies and I have been through very deep grief, I unfortunately, so I'm not diminishing the grief at all. But what I am saying from just a different perspective, what holds them here is deep, deep grief. I could answer Kaylee, why Kaylee's here very easily because Kaylee's dad, very similar to Kaylee, I think. Just in what I've watched of him, I, I was going to say badass, and but she also had that same tenacity. So I can see that. But what I do know is I'm not really a big fan of doing anything that has to do with the day that they left. The best way to celebrate someone that you love that's passed on is celebrate their birthday. Something other, especially, I don't know. That's my opinion. I've never been to the other side. Technically, I have had a near-death experience that was different. And I can only tell you what I think or what I feel. And what I feel is like celebrating the day they left or by any means acknowledging it. That's that. They also don't have emotions. Like, okay, if you came for a reading, now you can come back. And now, so we had the ultimate betrayal. This card has represented our hermit. He was the project manager. He was in the center of the wheel. He was dictating that entire night. He was good at what he did. Then we have Frat Row. That row has always represented the Knight of Swords. The Knight of Swords, I mean, this guy is on his horse. His sword is drawn. He's heading in a direction. He's heading, technically, this would be backwards, like in the world of tarot. But that's just here nor there at this moment. The point is, is like, this has always been fraught. Then this card always, always shows up for the Queen of Swords. Um, And the Hermit, he's gotten it a few times. Who else has gotten it? I don't know. The way I've been reading this, is this is a stress and anxiety card very clearly the colors are black um he's sitting up in his bed he can't sleep everyone's seeing between the lines we're getting messages from the other side or they're just like setting up camp and it's like as fast as a human can or whatever that word is interpretate or whatever that's how fast they can get the word out and they don't speak in english they don't speak words they speak pictures and feelings and back to the animal example have you ever heard two birds like talking no they can communicate they figured out a way to come back and i thought ethan looked very handsome at that party the emperor so this is 
This is how our nicknames have the Emperor's name is HJ. Well, actually, we just got one confirmation. I can keep, I can do best two out of three. I don't always do best two out of three. I mean, those were pretty clear cards, actually. So, so this is how we found it. So now we have an Emperor and a Queen of Swords. And I don't care what anything says because I did see a comment that Ethan was staying home watching a movie. And I could bullshit. And so that's fine. But, you know, you don't just take everything if it resonates and leave the rest. So we had a jumper. I haven't even asked a question yet. We got the confirmation that he. HJ is our emperor. Okay, these cards just jumped. So El Diablo. He's a Capricorn. Literally. He's a Capricorn male. So is HJ. He's a Capricorn male. We also got the tower. And I've said this a million times. I think it's really cute. If you're worrying about how other readers are reading, then you really need to work on your own stuff. I The audacity to go into someone else, another reader's reading, and tell them that they're doing something wrong, that's not your spot. And you don't belong at the table. That's just basic human etiquette. That's not even a YouTube thing. That's just rude. That happened to our lady. Thank you for putting the comment in with everyone's names that I always reference. Someone did that to her reading, and I thought she handled it pretty well. I was actually a little bit appalled. Just put it that way. I I just couldn't believe the audacity. We're all here to learn. We're all little pages. We're in second grade. It's okay to be in second grade. So the tower does not mean happiness or anything coming. It means September 11th to me. El Diablo goes without saying. This is an addiction card. This is like, it's El Diablo. It's your shadow side. It's everything that you don't want to face and why you're living in fear. I'll say that. Then we have a thinker. Well, that's nice. But then we have our next stress and anxiety card. We have our party. Oh, he's telling us this is a timeline story. Hold on. Oh, and the hermit's back. Okay, hold on. Um, I have to lay these down because the way that they came out is important to some. Did I shuffle these? <laughs> And I'm sorry, but you have to go back to number one. To understand, actually, maybe the Emperor came out in two. The Emperor, you can't get any higher than the Emperor and the Hierophant. Those are the two highest cards in the tarot. And they both, until two days ago, represented entities. Now, they represent people who happen to be a Capricorn male, who happen to end lives and literally... These, this is a literal end. These people are jumping out of the building. Um, which order? Okay, so then this is the party. Ethan showed us this. Oh, the threes. I saw that comment um, that maybe this is representing the triplets. Yeah, Miss Massey is not out of the woods yet. We haven't even read on her yet because like unraveling the betrayal that Ethan felt somehow is like precedent. He wants something about this is like until we do that. So then we have the party. Then we have our stress and anxiety. It's just telling me that night he knew she was about to hit the fan. Well... So we have the Emperor and El Diablo. They usually wouldn't go together. In this case, they do. And I feel like they speak for themselves. And we have the, I mean, these three together, if you got a reading and you actually had this with people that you know that are like alive, I would be really, I don't know what, I don't even know what to say. I would say that they probably hold a high power position, probably a CEO or owner of a company, something, something of high power socially on the outside. If they're really struggling with their inner demons and addiction. They cannot sleep. They are so stressed out. It's keeping them up at night because of the decisions they made were tower. It's called a tower moment because it's like life changing life ending whatever then we had our party is this party yeah this is the party this is like it could be the triplets it certainly could be the triplets no i don't know i don't even remember seeing a picture of him at a party with that girl i just remember hearing it so i don't know. we know they got paid to do this this is the this could be a contract this is the beginning of a i'll call it a contract of a paid agreement you gotta, you this is the beginning so at the part, that's this is what he's explaining. I just got it. So when they were at that party, I'm still, I believe that he was at that party. That's when the contract was in, put in place to I don't know, sleep with the devil, the emperors. What is it called? Like um, a wolf in sheep's clothing. That's what we're looking at right now. The devil's hiding behind the power and the money, but he's really right there. Then we have the house built on this. The emperor, oh, this was upside down. The emperor always gets this too, or regularly. This is, so four pillars is the four foundations. That's like your found you always build a house with four corners. Upside in reverse, this is like you built your house on sand. And sorry about it. Then we have, and I know, guys, I feel like I'm in Groundhog's Day with this. I don't know what I'm missing that we're still getting these cards, but it's still here. So we're going to keep working on it. I have seen other tarot readers say that this is, um, I think it was like a thinking card. This woman is not thinking. And she's not walking. I don't know. Some people think she can walk away. I don't see that. 
this is the Ace of Swords. Like she has eight swords around her. She's tied up and she has a blindfold on. She's probably one foot in the water. I don't know. I guess you couldn't take it. Like she's not following her intuition. I don't know. She's tied up. It doesn't, she's no free will here. To me, this would be a, like if you were doing a reading and you got, this would be like a, I would tread lightly. Like this could be a domestic violence card. Um, the hanged man has represented that to me. There was, when your little person cannot walk away with their, even the El Diablo can get up and walk away if he wants. These two can't. They're chained to him. So the difference is like, this guy can walk away. When you have someone who cannot just get up and walk away, to me, that can be a sign of an abusive, either abusive relationship. It could be emotional, mental, physical. I have no idea. But this would be a warning sign card, not the same one like the coffin when people are resting and relaxing another day. We also got, this is the ultimate heartbreak. It like hurts my heart to even show you guys this one because this card and the party were the, but Ethan, his own cards haven't shown up yet. So there's more to this. So this is the ultimate, for me, the ultimate heartbreak card. We literally just got all of these. So this is our friend. He was at a party with his friends. His friends were working behind the scenes to make deals. They were paying people. Oh, I'm surprised we don't have a speech on here to do the dirty work. If we had a page, that would be like very ideal. Um, and then the rest of them are death cards. I'm gonna ask Ethan to clarify for us the emperor. I want some dirt on the emperor. What else do we need to know about the emperor? So you have queen of cups in reverse. That has represented the emperor's parents since we started reading on him. There's something going on with our hermit. Oh, I should have asked about him. I'll ask about him next round. So what I'm looking at here, this is getting really heavy and I don't really know why yet, but I'm feeling emotional. So we have the queen of cups. She's the underlying energy. She's in reverse. That has represented our emperor's parents since the beginning. Usually it's both of them, but this one, our 10 of cups, happy home, happy family. They've all got this a lot. D-bag gets it a lot too. So this is the four of pentacles. Anytime you have a, pen, a four in reverse, it's like not good. <laughs> Because like, first of all, he's holding on really tightly to these pentacles. Wars in reverse are like your foundation is not strong. I don't know. It's like you have to spend money to make money. It's not, it's just like you're losing everything. You made a bad investment. But guess what we have next? Baby, El Bambino. This card represented the baby and it wasn't an actual baby. It was the fertilization or the coming together to a union of two things. We have the nine of pentacles upright. I'm actually surprised he has a pentacle upright. It's the only one, but nine of pentacles upright looks good. She's looking, I mean, she's happy, healthy. She's got pentacles. Then we have our, this is the eight, how many of this? Yeah, eight of wands. So an eight of wands, well, this is a fighting card. This is an action card. Wands are always action. Wands are fire. This is an action card. This also came out when we were watching, I think the night Ethan got betrayed. Ethan explained how he got betrayed. It's right here. Then we have our death. This to me is a literal death. This means to me is like, and I know I say this all the time, and I also know that other readers see it as rest and relaxation, but that's why those sayings, like the world is what you perceive it as. Like, you see this as rest and relaxation, fine. Who am I to tell you that you're not right. There's no right or wrong. I don't say it that way. This, remember the night that we saw like spy cam in the girl's house? This represented the internet to me from the beginning of this case. I think it's because there's a little cloud on here. I have no idea. A four of cups in general. I mean, it's an emotion card. To me, it's a spy card. There's no tarot police to tell you what in, is the internet. But swords in general are words. So swords, I think swords pretty much represent the internet now. Will chariots represent any vehicle, car, plane, automobile, train. We have judgment. They got this every single call last night. This is duality. This is like, it just has to make, you have to make two decisions. And then this is out in the cold. Lost everything out in the cold. I wonder if D-Bag's turning on him. Her last boyfriend is long gone. I mean, he showed up the other night, like I think it was last night for a second, but he hasn't been here in a few weeks. He's out of here. And there's still no love or anything. His mom's in reverse. That can be a very mentally unwell woman in his life. Actually, it doesn't necessarily have to be a mom. Representative, I would say a very unstable female. Cups are always emotions. Still got the baby, still got the happy home. Surprised our girl didn't show up. Oh, I feel like I didn't shuffle them. We just got the three swords again. So I'm gonna ask to clarify this hermit who's sitting right here. And I'm just trying to figure out what, why is the hermit, what's going on? Are the heroes and justice? These are the cards that we always wanna see, especially when we're asking about the hermit. Judgment.